Welcome online and streaming viewers. Jim Patton here with Jeff Lasky, who's a producer here at 10 News. We wanted to have a little fun because, as you know, Jeopardy! has a big special starting tonight. We're going to get the three greatest champions of all time from the show, match them together, and then they're going to just play until we find out who is the greatest of all time from Jeopardy! The reason we have Jeff here is that, Jeff, you were actually a contestant on the show. Yes, the, the least great <laughs> of all time, as it, as Are it turned out. Are you going to be brought back for the least great of all time special when that happens? Yeah, if, if they ever have a tournament for people who finished in yeah. last place with one dollar, <laughs> I can is actually that, go on that Is that, that what event. happened? So is that really what dead, happened? Dead last one dollar. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, but but so I did get to go on the show as a contestant last year. Give us some insight then. How did you, how did that process begin? You decided you want to be a contestant. What happens when you make that decision? I'd always loved Jeopardy. We, in fact, when I used to work on the night shift here at 10 News, we would sit in the break room, another channel I know, and, and watch Jeopardy right. and, and play along. But uh, I knew I would never get on the show in a million years. So I just took the test. Uh, it's an online test that you take to get on the show. Okay. And I would just take it for fun. Gotcha. And then uh, last year, I took the test. And I said, you know what? I did a lot better this time than mm -hmm. I normally do. Who knows? Maybe I would have a shot. But I still never thought I'd get on the show because the, the online test is only the first Part. Okay. I did end up getting a, a call about six months later. They said, we'd like for you to come and audition. So I drove up to Los Angeles. So just through the online yeah. taking the test, you got a call? Yes. Okay. Uh, to give you some numbers, uh, 80,000 people, they told us, took the online test at that same time wow. that I took it. About 2,000 people got a call to audition. Okay. So it's, a, it's immediately a very small number. Right. You must have done really well then. I got, I, I think I got, it's a 50 question test. I think I got 40 of them right. I actually, my wife actually recorded so that I could go back and check my answers gotcha. uh, to see how, how I did. Uh, so then I went up to LA. They had a live in-person audition which featured another 50 question test. Okay. So I knew the odds of me passing the first test were so minuscule. I'd taken it and failed it so many times. I'm like, there's no way I passed two in a row. But I actually felt pretty good when I took the second test as well and you're auditioning in person in front of the producers of the show. They have you play a, a practice game with the other contestants. And, uh, and I felt like I did pretty well in, in that. And, and uh, it only took about four weeks after that in-person audition to get so the call. So for the audition, you were actually on set playing the game show? It was actually at a hotel because okay. uh, they go around the country doing these, these audition sites, but they put up a screen and they have a version of the board. So you actually are sitting there with the buzzer gotcha. and kind of playing the game. And that, to be honest, Jim, since remember, I knew in my head I was never going to get on the show. My dream was <laughs> huh. just to do the audition so I could stand there with the buzzer sure. and pretend like I was playing the game. So for me, it was mission accomplished. But when I felt like I did well on the test, uh -huh. I was like, okay, well, Jeopardy contestants typically aren't the most energetic or entertaining bunch. <laughs> I figured I'm just right. going to go relax and have fun and be personable and see where that gets me. Sure. And it ended up getting me on the show. And it did get you on the show. When, once you're on the show, how does it go? I mean, what I don't understand is, is how you s prepare for something like that because it just seems like trivia from any possible direction. How do you have that breadth of knowledge or even know what direction to study in? Yeah, one of the most common questions I get since being on the show is, do they tell you what to study? Do they let you know what they're going to ask you about? The answer is no. You have zero clue. It could be anything from right. anything. So the best way I feel to prepare for starters is watch the show religiously because you get a sense of here's things that come up a lot. Here's topics that come up a lot. So uh, like world capitals is can be its own category, but that's also something that comes up in a lot of questions. Right. So that was something I started hammering on was just I made flashcards and would sit there here, here at 10 News during lunch every day. I would sit around a table with <laughs> producers and reporters, my friends like Lindsay Pena and, yeah. and, and Michael Rosin, one of our producers, and they would quiz me on world capitals every single Day. So yeah, it was a lot of, of cramming like you would for a school test in high okay, school. Okay, so you're, you're doing what studying you can, and then when do you actually get on the show? So uh, I had a, a little bit of a different experience because I was an alternate candidate. Okay. What I learned is, so uh, Jeopardy! shoots, uh, the entire week's episodes are done in one day. 
So they shoot five episodes in a day. And what they told me is they always like to have a Southern Californian, an extra Southern Californian around just in case somebody gets sick. Interesting. Somebody misses a flight. Do you think that helped you to get on the show? The fact that you were from Southern California? I don't think that it necessarily helped to get on the show, but it, it gives them, it gives the producers of the show flexibility that I, I knew that, if, that I might not get on the first day that I went in which case they said, we'll put you on on another day, which happened to me. Gotcha. So I actually went up for a day, sat in, in with, with all the contestants, went through the whole experience, didn't get on the show that day, which gave me the opportunity to see how it all worked, to go through that experience. And when's this happening? This was uh, November of uh, 20, yeah, 2018 okay. that I went up for the first time. For the first time, you watched so I got to go through go the whole the experience right. because you, you don't, as a contestant, you don't know when you're going to appear. So the way it works is they have the returning champion, right, for, for the Monday show, that first show. Everybody goes through the full morning experience, which includes a long, there's like an hour long orientation where they tell you, here's how the buzzer works. Here's yeah, how right. you go through a, a makeup experience, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is, is interesting to have a professional <laughs> makeup artist makeup doing for you, right? the whole thing. Then you actually get to play a practice game on the real set. So you're going out there on, I mean, you walk into that studio just like you wow. see on TV. Yeah. You're standing up there, you write your name uh -huh. on the thing and you get to start playing a practice game. And that day is an alternate, I Is that terrible. still part of the qualifying process, being on the actual set, playing the practice that, game? That part you're gonna be on once, once you get In a sense, they there. wanna make sure you're not gonna implode on them at any particular sure. point along the way. Sure, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they want you to feel comfortable, especially yeah. with the buzzer. Uh, they want you to feel comfortable on it. And that alternate day, I never felt comfortable on the buzzer. I was like, I couldn't tell, am I buzzing too early? Am I buzzing too late? Right. I felt like I wasn't getting in. Um, so, and then, so you, you, they have the returning champion and then they just, it's a, a drawing basically where they say, okay, uh, Jim and Jeff, you're going to be in this first game. They rush you back, touch up your makeup and 10 minutes later, you're on the show. Somebody wins that game. They come back out to the other contestants. They say, okay, this time, uh, Martha and Sally, you're the, and so you go out there. So I had, went through that whole experience. Gotcha. Knowing there was a chance I could get on. I didn't end up getting on. I ended up coming back uh, March of last year. So there was a good, what, four months yeah. between the time sure. that I went the first time and the second time. When you went that first time and you're watching, what were the butterflies like? <sighs> there was some, uh, you know, it was more anxiety for me than nervousness. And that's where I felt like maybe I had an advantage is mm -hmm. we do this for a living. So we don't do, you know, you, you don't do 10 News midday at 11 o'clock because the show right. is ready. You do it because it's 11 o'clock and Well, you're not and just a producer the behind the scenes. You work on air, so I'm you're comfortable reporter, being sure. on camera. I was a baseball yeah. broadcaster for, for many years. So, gotcha. you know, the, the broadcast doesn't start because, okay, everything's perfect and you're ready to go. It starts because it's 7.30, the game's starting and gotcha. you're on. So I felt like maybe I would have an advantage there that I would be comfortable in a studio like this with lights. I would be comfortable with a camera and, and knowing <laughs> right. where to look. And so that, I think, help me uh, to be able to be comfortable on so the set. So when you got to watch the first game, did you think, boy, I would have really kicked butt if I were in this game? Or are you like, what am I doing here? This is a big mistake. No, you're, it, it's, it's like you're watching at home. We're, we're the, okay. the, the contestants are all sitting in the audience as well. We're all sitting in a corner of the audience and you're sitting there answering the questions in your head, right. think, thinking along. I actually took, they give you a little Jeopardy pen that kind of looks like the buzzer. So I actually snuck mine into the studio and I was trying to practice buzzer Smart. timing okay. while I was sitting in the studio. But yeah, we're, we're sitting there. Uh, I was uh, sitting next to a woman who ended up winning uh, one of the games that day and, and we were you know whispering to each other back and forth and trying to answer the so questions. So you got to watch it and we're uh, gonna need to wrap real quick, but you get on the real game and what happened? Just Give us a little wrap there. What happened? Got off to game. a great start. Nice. Uh, but for for me, it was I, I, I felt like I was going to have to get lucky. I felt like my breadth of knowledge wasn't as much as most Jeopardy champions. So the categories that I was comfortable with, there was a TV category, there was a, a political category, there was a U.S. government category. I did well in those categories. 
there was a lot of stuff I just didn't know. So I ended up feeling good on the buzzer. I felt comfortable. But after a, a good start, there was just a lot of stuff I, I didn't know, and I ended up finishing in third place. I think it's a great accomplishment that you got on the show. Obviously, you had to go through some hoops there, and a lot of people get eliminated. As you said, most people don't even make it on the show itself. You did that, so I bow to thee. <laughs> great job. It's been fun, and, and people yeah. love talking about it. And when something like, like this comes up, like this uh, right. uh, event tonight, people love talking about it. You'll be about tuned in tonight, I would bet. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a lot How of fun. Cool I wish that? I could go and watch it and meet those guys who, yeah. are, who are that great at yeah. it. Yeah. The best players of all time will <laughs> be on the show tonight, starting at 8 o'clock right here on ABC. Thanks for spending a little time with us. And Jeff, thank you for the insight. A pleasure. Kind of fun to talk to you like this. And I didn't know you were a sportscaster and all this other stuff. Yeah, well, I didn't win Jeopardy, so talking about it is pretty much all I got. <laughs> all right. Jeff, great job. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk to you later. Have fun watching the show tonight.